Hello and welcome to CCI Live. It's Friday, it's 12 and we're bringing you... Matt, a... it's the Thursday. We're in the Arts Cafe. Oh yeah, it's Creative Cafe Live. Hello folks. <laughs> Today we're broadcasting live from a completely new location right here in Eldon's very own Arts Cafe with a brand new show. So how about some new titles? Yes, that is correct. We've been given this space right here in the cafe that you, you, know, you know and love and turned it into a special one-off live studio to bring you an exclusive episode showcasing you. you. That's right. The aim of this show is to celebrate all the work that goes on inside Eldon. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what's coming up over the next 45 minutes. Coming up on today's show, we're joined by Hannah Simpson, a third year student who will be painting live in the studio. We'll be seeing how 3D works and how to make your own 3D films. Danny Hayden, our creative photographer, will be snapping shots of you throughout the show. And we'll be looking into green screen and how we use it on a weekly basis. All right, well, why don't I show you around our fancy new studio? Here we have the comfy corner nice where and comfy. Murray and Yaz will be uh, talking to all our guests about their work and just having a good old chin. Yeah. That's what we do. We like to do that. What we like do. to talk do. quite a lot. Well, right now you're looking at our tracking camera. This allows us to roll between the different sections of our studio and gives you a chance to be on telly. Now, this is our roaming camera and it'll be focusing on here on the lovely ladies at the table. Now, it's not loose women, don't worry about it. Now, hello ladies, how are you doing today? Hi, good. All right, great. Now, let me ask you, who, who does what here at Portsmouth U? TVB, like it's... TVB. Yeah, yeah TVB. All of you TVB. <laughs> yeah, we are, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not going to be a, a very interesting, a varied <laughs> interview then. <laughs> so, tell us, have you ever been up to the art studio? I have. You have? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and, and was it an enjoyable experience? It was very nice, yeah. Great. Well, uh, one of our uh, interviewees is up there right now, and uh, let's show you who she is and what she does. To me, my work is very personal. I always put a lot of heart into my work, so I think that's well, another reason why I can't sell any of it, because I don't want to. I can, I could ne I've never had done, and I don't think I could ever part with a painting. I keep putting them up around my house. Uh, so it always means a lot to me, but it's slightly political as well, I think, with the whole female, uh, women artists doing about female, naked females, you know, I look at a lot of, you know, rude stuff that probably would people wouldn't expect me to just openly have here, which is uh, nice, I think that's quite a powerful thing to do. Um, so power and passion, I think, that's definitely what I describe my work, or what it means to me. Uh, my name's Hannah Simpson, I am a fine arts student at the University of Portsmouth, and I've just started my third year. My main theme of my work is female nudes, um, not male nudes, I can't, males are too bulky for me, but I find the female forms a lot curvier, the light bounces off the skin better, it's just a lot, I find it a lot more enjoyable to draw. Um, but I do paint, I'm an oil painter and sometimes use acrylics and I like to get uh, the texture into the, the work. So there'll be lots of greens, blues and colours that probably shouldn't be there, but it makes it a lot more expressive and textured, a lot, uh, a lot more depth to it as well. In five years' time, God, I personally I think my work's quite hard to sell. Obviously with an artist, I think one of your main goals is to sell your work. You want lots of people to see it. But because it's quite rude and not to everyone's taste, it's quite hard. So personally, I'd just like to sell a couple of pieces. I think that would be my main aim. I chose to study this course because I can't do anything else. <laughs> I can't read, I can't write, and I can't spell, but I can paint. So, but I do thoroughly enjoy it. Oh, 
Lovely. Lovely. Absolutely awesome. Well, we're joined here by a resident artist for the day, Hannah. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you today? All right. Good. How are you? Thanks for coming. Yeah, Thanks for being part of the show. My pleasure. Thank you. We love having you here. Yeah, we do. We do. Good. So what are you up to today? Uh, I'm coming in. I'm going to do some live art. Uh, I don't know what I'm painting yet, but I know I'll be using a very expressive style. Um, I'm going to be picking something random out of a hat, and whatever it is, I have to have the rest of the show to paint it. So, um, oh, a bit of pressure oh, then. I'm a bit nervous. Yeah. Uh, something I can't draw. What, what can't, can't you draw? <gasps> oh, you'd be nicking my lines. <laughs> what can't <laughs> you draw? So luckily, no one's put feet, feet and noses. Feet. What about what would be ideal? Um, just a face, really. That's. What about us? Face. What about our faces? Well, Check it out. I'd put a lovely, great big red love heart. Oh, oh it'd be lovely. Stop it. Today. Oh, there he is. Hello. 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 Um, throughout the show, with the best tweet, receiving a special prize, oh. which we'll tell you about later on. Right, let's see how Hannah is getting on. Over to you, Matt. All right, well, uh, here we are. Thanks, Yaz. Now, earlier on, we took suggestions from the audience as to what will be painted live today. So uh, if you'd like to take one of those, give it a good mix, mix it up. up. Yeah. And then I've got, only got myself to blame. Exactly. Da, 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 da. An audience member. An audience member. So who feels like getting painted today? If we could have maybe a volunteer. Anyone? Him over there. Dark hair. Oh, that gentleman. Yes, yes. Come over. Come forwards. No. Oh no, sorry, him. This gentleman. Oh. This gentleman is the one going to be painted. So, how do you feel about that? Uh, I'll work with what I've got. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Should I think be fine. A Picasso style, maybe, with that one. Yeah, should be fine. Bit abstract. Yeah. Well, well let's kind of get some of that. Murray has more to tell you about what's up next. Oh, Yaz, Yaz, what are you wearing? Wearing a blazer, some creepers. No, 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 no. Not what you're wearing, top. like on your face. You look oh, like Marty McFly's. These. Yeah, you look like Marty McFly's cousin from the nineties. Well, Murray. Yeah. Have you know that these are old school 3D sunglasses? I mean, 3D glasses. And although retro and quite cool, yeah. you can probably find a pair of these in Top Man these days. Okay. They're not going to be much use to you for 3D these days. Oh, so you mean like the, the 3D, the films, the 3D films? Yeah, like the 3D. Oh, right. Free, absolutely. 3D is becoming more and more popular and it's even moving into television. Oh. But did you know that you can make your own 3D movies far easier than what you'd actually think? Some of our crew attempted to make their own 3D camera rig, but first of all, let's recap on what 3D actually is. Okay. Most of us have seen 3D, whether it be in the cinema, at a theme park or at home. But how does it work? 3D works by mimicking the eyes and recreating the image that your brain creates for you. Think about it now. You have two eyes but see one image. This is because your brain puts the two images together, which allows us to perceive depth. So in simple terms, to get a 3D picture, you need two cameras, one for each eye. Putting these two cameras as close together as possible gives us a better 3D image as it is a closer representation of the eyes themselves. Now there are different types of 3D that you may already be familiar with. Passive 3D is the most common and can be found in your local 3D cinema screen. This technology uses polarised glasses to give us a 3D picture and works by only allowing certain light through each lens of the glasses. The cinema projector puts two images onto the screen slightly overlapping each other. We see this as blurry without the glasses but when on each eye is seeing a separate image because of the polarising filters. Our brain recreates this image just like it would in real life and gives us the illusion of depth. Although this is possibly the most comfortable way to watch 3D, we are actually only seeing half of the image's resolution. Active shutter 3D allows the viewer to see the full resolution image, but the glasses are a bit more cumbersome and a lot more expensive. This 3D is used in TV sets and mainly for home use. The glasses have shutters in each lens that open and close intermittently extremely fast. This shows the left eye an image, then the right, then the left, and so on and so on. It's up to the brain again to assemble the images and create a 3D picture. The cheapest and perhaps the most common form of 3D you might remember from the Beano or even a cereal box. Anaglyph 3D works the same way as passive by using special but cheap lenses in the glasses to show each eye a different image. Which is when, and you guessed it, the brain processes the two images as one 3D picture. When we build our rig we'll be using two cameras to capture separate images and using editing software to match these images up. 
Colour filters will be applied that match our anaglyph glasses and hopefully we'll be showing you some 3D live in the studio. That's a very quick overview of how 3D works, but it truly is a science and an art to get right. If you'd like to learn more about it, go to www.creativecafelive.wordpress.com and follow the links. We'll be going back to 3D later on when we show you how you can make your own 3D film and rig. So let's talk to the loose women table. How's it going, girls? Hi, good. All right. Enjoying the show so far? Yes, yes. So nice. Yeah. Right. Okay, let me ask you a little bit about 3D. Now, who's seen a, a 3D film lately? I've seen, yeah, what one was it? Ice Age 3 or 2, can't remember exactly, but oh, Ice right. Age. <laughs> and it was good? It was great. It makes you feel like you're in the film, so. Fun. So what are your opinions on 3D? Because a lot of people like it, a lot of people hate it. So I personally think it's better with an animation. Mm. Um, like I saw Titanic 3D recently, didn't really know any, notice any 3D effects at all, although the quality was better, but the 3D didn't, didn't really do anything for me, but animation I think is better. I think it's yeah. better if they start off with the intention of making it a 3D film rather than mm -hmm. trying to go back and then make that yeah. sort of yeah. resolution. Um, sort of like Tintin, as you said, animation, that was quite good. Great. Um, the Avengers, the Marvel one's pretty good as well. Excellent. All right, well, thank you very much, ladies. Well, another part of the CCI faculty in the university is the photography department. Let's head back to the comfy corner and find out more. Yeah, welcome back. Photography is becoming increasingly popular due to the digital age and the, you know, the low prices you can get a decent camera for. Our next guest over the last two years, started learning photography here, right here in Eldon, mm -hmm. and has featured their work around Portsmouth. Let's take a, take a little look. Third year entertainment technology student at University of Portsmouth. Um, and last year I got into photography, and that's what I'm doing now is a hobby and hopefully as a future profession. In my course you get a choice of different units and all, it's quite varied and I did a photography unit not really knowing what it was going to be like and ended up um, getting really into it, um, just got really into the idea of photography and the freedom of it and it was kind of ended up being like art instead of without having to actually be good at drawing or anything like that so that, it kind of got me into it from there. I wouldn't really say I've got a particular style, I've got like a particular quality of work and like maybe like um, when people look at my pictures they can kind of tell it's my work from like what the quality or what the standard of, of work is. But um, in terms of style, I usually, um, I'm experimenting all the time with what I'm doing. So it's always changing and it'll always be different. Um, so from one month, it might, I might only shoot in black and white and then next month it might be completely different. It might be over-edited or under-edited. Music photography is one of my um, favorite types of photography. Um, just being a big music fan myself, I sort of fell into it that way. I ended up doing um, music uh, live music photography um, really is an excuse to go get free gig passes to be honest and, and then I kind of got into it from there. And in, um, in portrait photography I much prefer the more natural style of portraits um, as opposed to you know the studio style with the, um, the high key backlighting and all that kind of thing. I prefer one which as well as describes the person, describes their surrounding, describes the world they're living in through, through the portrait itself so just including other elements as well as just the face or the, pic, um, or the person itself. You know, just by the clothing or where it's shot or the, um, the lighting used and the style it's edited to kind of give uh, a better idea of yeah, their, more of their world I think um, as opposed to studio portraits which are they don't really describe the person so much. Yeah the plan is to stick uh, with photography when I graduate. Like I said I, I'm pretty much um, right out of the starting gate in photography I'm, I'm only really finding my feet in, um, footing in it. I'm hoping to go away travelling and do some travel photography or carry on doing music photography. I've been talking to a couple of um, publications about getting in with them um, and being sent to gigs and all that kind of thing. That was awesome. Thank you. Absolutely awesome. Oh, Thank wicked, you. Wicked, wicked. And here he is, Danny Hayden, everybody. Ooh. Hello. Ooh. Hello. Yeah. And welcome to our one-off show. Thanks for having me. How are you feeling today? Yeah, feeling good. Yeah. Yeah. How are you guys? Happy to be I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Better for seeing you. Yeah, so, you. what are you doing today? What are you, what are you up to? Uh, today, well, um, I've got a portable studio set up on the other side of a cafe over there. Uh -huh. uh, and I can uh, talk to the audience members, and if anyone wants a portrait, I can bring them over, they can get a picture. So, okay, right? if you want a photo, guys, mm -hmm. come to this guy. Yeah, yeah he, he, kn he, knows it. he knows it. He What's will. your favourite thing to take a picture of? Um, oddly enough, not not people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I will. But you didn't say yeah. That. yeah. What's your least no, favorite people are my, thing. My least favorite thing. To take photographs of. I don't know. I like take, I'll take pictures of anything. Really. Yeah. 
Well, I'm excited to see all the pictures. And that's right, and the pictures that Danny will be taking here will be displayed at the end of the show. You can also view them online at www.creativecafelive.wordpress.com. Now, don't forget to tweet us your thoughts and questions about anything you see here for your chance to win that mystery prize. Danny's going to be leaving us in a second to take some pictures. Yeah, I'm excited but for that. for now, we're just gonna take a short break. Still to come, we have the 3D rig finale, illustrations with the green screen technology, and a bit more on CCI channel, and how to get your work shown here. Finally, we'll be dropping in to see how Hannah is doing. And don't switch off just yet. We'll be back right after this message. ICC, your... What's the thing about being on... Uh, is it... ICC... Um, no, I'm afraid. ICC, your eye. Is that funny? Is that even good? You're watching CCI. 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 CCI channel. It is often watching you back, so bear that in mind next time. Broadcasting to you since 2008. You can get your work showcased on the channel. Your work showcased right here on this screen. Working in collaboration with Portsmouth City Council and the BBC. <laughs> You are watching CCI. 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 CCI Live. It's live, so something will probably go wrong. It's amazing. Welcome back. At the start of the show, we set our resident artist, Hannah, the task of painting a picture for us live throughout the show. Now, how are you getting on? Sorry to interrupt. It's all right. It's all right. It's very hard to draw, actually. But I think, because it's a horrible, gloomy day, I'm going to use bright colours, I think. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, it's it looks fantastic. Orange and pink, so, yeah, I'm just going to use lots of colour and just... I'm going to use it as an experiment, I think. So, okay. And yeah. Anything gone wrong so far? Um, the start. I, I, as I said, I hate noses, so I was like, right, I'm going to start with the nose. It's all right. I just give me a bit more time. All right. And we'll hopefully, give you, I'll have something better. Give you a little bit more time. <laughs> well, the CCI channel broadcasts out each day, just like any other TV channel. Although, perhaps the more exciting aspect is our very own live TV show, CCI Live, which broadcasts every Friday at 12. So there's a chance to have your work shown around the university buildings. Uh, also, did you know that the huge screen in Guildhall Square is owned by the BBC? And you have the opportunity to showcase your work there too. Now as a channel, we're always looking for new content and where better to start than you guys here in Eldon, arguably the most creative building across the entire university. So here's a short video explaining how you can have your work showcased. Technology has been heavily involved in television and film production for many years now, mm. with a number of huge films and shows using it to create the scenes that you remember and love. Oh, I know. We even used it at the beginning of the show, mm -hmm. but uh, not many people out there know how it works or no, how it's I used. Don't. I don't know. Do you not? No. Well, good for you, because Chris <laughs> is here to explain to you how it's used in live television from the studio upstairs. Oh. That way. Hi, I'm Chris, and this is a green screen. You may have heard about green screens before, or maybe blue screens. It's even possible you've heard the technical term, chroma keying. 
Green screens, blue screens or chroma keying has been applied to television and film productions since the 1930s. But before I tell you more about them, let's use my chroma key to get into the world of green screen. Oh. Chroma keying in its most basic form is used to replace a narrow range of colours in video with a different background. But why blue or green? Well in actual fact any colour in the spectrum can be used. You may have noticed that blue was often the principal colour for keying out a few years back. But more recently, green has become more widely used. The colour blue is good for complementing skin tone, therefore still often used in a lot of weather reports. However, green screens have become more popular due to the fact that the latest digital cameras mimic the human eyes to sensitivity of the colour green. Green is also useful for outdoor keying as the usage of blue against blue sky has its obvious implications. So green and blue, how about red? No, unfortunately it's far too similar to the natural reds in people's skin tones and would cause parts of actors' faces to disappear. Ah! So keying out and taking away the background allows visual effects personnel the flexibility to place or remove actors or objects in any scene, at any time of day, anywhere in the world. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this is weird. Chroma keying also creates the opportunity to manipulate a scene to create different illusions and place objects in a video that were never there, or never should be there. Yep, and you'll find a lot of your favourite feature films make good use of chroma keying to astonish the viewer. For instance, Lieutenant Dan's legs in Forrest Gump. Gary Sines didn't require any amputation for this role, he wore a pair of blue socks. That, with some clever camera work and visual effect wizardry, created a believable illusion that his legs really had been blown off by a mortar shell. Speaking of wizardry, Harry Potter's invisibility cloak. Simply wrapping a cloth of the same colour as the key background creates the illusion that parts of the body have disappeared. Or even, the entire body altogether. But it's simply not a case of using some software to key out any old colour. Proper thought has to go into the lighting, the colour of the screen to key with, and what camera to use. It's easy to make mistakes or not get the desired effect. What do you reckon wearing a green shirt in front of a green screen will do? Excuse me? And this is where green screen and chroma keying is used in our weekly show, CCI Live. We're currently doing a rehearsal right now. And this is a professional environment. We have a green screen, lighting, HD cameras, complete with auto cue, which we have too. And this is the studio where our broadcasts are made every week. But we've also got more rooms in the studio. And we've got a second studio as well, or more commonly referred to as the green room. Now the green room is also multi-purpose. It's used for guests who are waiting to be brought onto the show as you know, interviewers or maybe a live band. But during our weekly broadcasts, we use this as the newsroom. Now the newscast would generally stand here, deliver the news to the camera, with the green screen behind to key out a background. Yes, thank you Nick and hello viewers. Well, it's been quite an eventful week here in Portsmouth and around the world. And we've also got the gallery, with its rules of course, and um, let's just see if we can go inside. And roll titles in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, including a thundering 21-gun salute at Fort Blockhouse in Gosport. To mark the Queen's 60... All right, now let's check on Danny, and uh, maybe I'll get my picture taken. <laughs> Excuse me, please, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Danny, how, how are you getting on over here? Yeah, it's good. A lot of people have come up so far, so uh, more people want to come up, get to take some more pictures. Yeah, like. maybe you could take us through a bit of a process of how you take a, a picture. Yeah, yeah, if you want to sit down, we can... Uh, Oh yeah, all right. Like, yeah. All right then. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So how do I how do I need to be? Just you know, you have to be, just have to be as relaxed as possible. So relaxed. Like yeah. Oh, I'm relaxed. Mm-hmm. So just simple life setup. Okay. So just natural. Natural. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah, no, 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 no. All right, well, <laughs> looks like he's getting on just fine. So now back to the comfy corner. <laughs> yeah, re re really nice, natural. Nice and sexy no, there. Yeah, nice and natural there, bud. Natural, huh? very natural. As you can see, once again, we have done the glasses. Oh, yeah, we have. Glasses, come oh. on, in preparation for the mind-blowing 3D experience yeah, that's coming your way. Earlier, we, we promised you a look at how to make your own 3D rig on the cheap. Mm -hmm. And here is how you do it. Now you've seen how 3D works, it's time to make it yourself. Being men, we love DIY, so we've come down to the man cave in Southfield to try and make our very own 3D rig. You can do it too. It's homemade, it's cheap, it's going to cost you under 25 quid, and it's going to be a lot of fun. You will need four meters of PVC pipe, four T-joints, two 90-degree corner joints, a shoulder width length of MBF, five by 70 mil machine screws with corresponding nuts, two six by 50 mil machine screws. So the first step is to cut the PVC pipe into the required length. You want about a foot coming off the back of the shoulder, and you want to cut the PVC pipe in the front to a comfortable arm length. We're going to use the PVC pipe cutters to cut through the pipe. It's always better to cut it too long than too short. We've cut it a bit too long here, but we can always slide the weight down back this way so it won't make a difference. So the cameras are going to go here and here. Now what we're going to do is mark where we want the T-joints to go in. So these are where the T-joints are going to sit, and we need to get the right width for the shoulders for the two cameras to fit on. Our measurement is 480, but it will depend on the width of your shoulders and the person's arm length. So that's where it's going to be, and we're going to want two more T-joints in here to form the platform for our base. These joints are probably quite hard to get on. So now we're going to measure for these corner joints to go on for the handle, so you want it at a comfortable distance to your arms. So now we're going to mark the board appropriate to the width of the rig. So this is our camera plate and this is going to go here on our platform that we just made. We're going to want to drill here, here, here and here and attach the machine screw. Mark the points with a screwdriver. So now we drill through the points that we just made with the screwdriver. So now we screw the nuts in just to keep the camera base plate in place. So we want to measure the center point on our base plate, which for us is 18.85. So now we want to measure between the halfway point of our base plate and the halfway point of our camera screw on the bottom of our camera. Uh, we take this measurement away from the halfway point. So now we're going to measure between this point and this point here to go on the other side of our base plate. Drill at both these points, making sure the distance between the base of the camera plate is the same on both sides. So we've attached our camera by using two 6mm screws They've gone through the bottom of the base plate with the nuts already attached. The screw is screwed into the base of the camera and the nut is tightened at the bottom so the camera stays in place. At the moment we've only got one, but we will have two to show you the 3D. So this is essentially it. The next part is just for comfort. We're going to measure our handles and cut our foam insulation 
to the correct length. So here it is, our 3D rig. At the moment we've only got one camera, but when you next see us, we'll have two. Filming in 3D. We're joined here by some members of the audience lovely, to partake in. Lovely audience I'm here. excited now. Yeah, yeah, me too. Right, so we had to go at filming some footage of our newly made rig that you just seen. Um, some of the audience members are here to watch it live. Ooh. When, when this footage was edited, effects were applied to combine the two cameras, making the 3D work. Now, if you'd like to follow the same steps we did, then go to www.creativecafelive.wordpress.com where we have posted a step-by-step -step guide allowing you to do it all yourself. This is the first time it's ever been broadcast, so let's see if it actually works. Got them on, right, let's have a watch. Come on, guys. <laughs> I enjoyed that. And impressive too. It was very impressive. All right, and we're back here with Hannah. Hannah, how's it going? I haven't finished, but I've run out of time, haven't I? You have, so should we give the, the reveal to, uh, to Matt? Do you want to come on board, I'm Sarah, so and sorry. take a look at what she's done to you? <laughs> oh, I like it. I'm so yeah. sorry. I'll sign it for you. Um, what do you think? Your reaction? Um, yeah, it looks good. Yeah? Happy you happy it, yeah. with that? You're going to yeah, hang it on your wall? Sign it for you, Hannah. All yeah, right, I'll, I'll, I'll sign it now. And I'll, uh, I'll take it home. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, well, dear. thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Ah, thank you very much. Cheers. Absolutely fantastic. Well, we're nearing the end of the show, so now it's time to pick out a winner of the best tweet. Back to the comfy corner. We're joined by Danny again, who's going to Hello, pick Winnie. out our Twitter. Danny, I've missed you. No, I've but you're going to pick out our Twitter. I am. Yeah. How have you found it today, Danny? Yeah, it's been good. I mean, the drawing is great. I mean. I quite, you, I quite like one of myself, I think. You'd like a drawing as well? Yeah, I think he, so. He, well, maybe we could hook that up. I'll tell you what, you could take a picture of Hannah. And then she could, and then she could draw that picture. Yeah, that would be good. Who was your favourite? Who did you take a photo of? <laughs> Who did you take a photo of? Who was your favourite? Who was it? Um, there was a fellow who was wearing his 3D glasses. Who looked what kind very of pose retro. was he doing? Uh, he, was, uh, he turned a chair around and... Oh, a know. nice... Nice yeah, nice, nice, like sexy pose. Yeah. Uh, Matt, Matt was doing oh, some Matt, poses. Oh, Matt, of course, yeah. Matt's oh, yeah. pictures. Yeah, yeah I know. Sexy. It was. Well, anyway, earlier on the show, we showed you a few of our crew building the 3D rig. We demonstrated live, and we also mentioned that the winner of the best tweet yeah. competition will walk away with a mystery prize. So this is, in fact... Oh, here we go. Our 3D rig, everybody. Oh. Whoa! Minus the cameras and the equipment, of course. So, Danny, could you pick a winner for us, please? I can, I've got it here. Okay, roll. Drum okay. Roll. Drum the, uh, the winner is, um, I think it's Little Yui. Little Wee or Little Yui? Little Wee? Uh, little Wee? I think so. Oh, look, look, look who joined. It? Or little At Little W I E. At yes. W I E. What does it say? It says, enjoying the Creative Cafe and looking like a geek with the 3D glasses. Little Wee, we this is coming are. right to little you. Little Wee, wherever this you are. This is yours now. We look like geek geeks too, so and look don't who, worry look about it. Look who's joined us. Nice back and hand back, guys. Oh, full house. Let's have a look at the wee picture. 
I'm not there. Wow. <laughs> Round of applause. Right. Right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's amazing. Very good. It smells a bit, though. I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's it's fresh. quite spirit, so I like it. I like it's it. Nice. Nice aroma. Well, <laughs> that is it for today's show. We hope you've had a good time and are now more aware of what goes on in this ama amazing building. Oh, right. Oh. Absolutely. Now, don't forget to keep sending in your work for the channel and you can still get in touch with us at ccitv at port.ac.uk and you can also still tweet us about the show at CCI Cafe. And don't forget to keep watching CCI Live every Friday at 12. Thank you to you, Hannah. Thank, thank you. Thank you to Danny. Thank you. And thank you to all the audience here today. You're bye. 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 I love bye, you. Bye, bye. <laughs>